Hello everybody and welcome back to Stellaris. Um, I apologize if I sound uh, a little bit off today. Uh, I've been sick for the past couple of days, so I'm very congested and uh, my voice might be a little bit nasally and, and coarse today. Uh, but I am back in the saddle, we're back recording new episodes and uh, hopefully everything should remain on schedule this week. Um, now in the last episode, we discovered this civil war and I don't know why I was so confused by it. I thought we were being invaded by the Lyriton Compact um, because the rebellion is called the Blessed Lyriton Concordat. So I got them confused with the pre-established empire, the Lyriton Con Compact. But this is actually a brand new uh, empire. It's actually just a rebellion from the state of Panexala. And um, this shouldn't be too hard to put down. I don't think they have any allies. So we have three full fleets ready to go. And I say we start using them. Uh, we're gonna quickly crush this rebellion and we need to gain some influence because I don't think we have the right vassal agreement set with the sender and authority. We need to turn overlord conflicts to all. That's gonna cost us 150 influence. If I do this, then I can't specialize them as a special type of vassal and that might actually be okay. Um, I just want to see what their loyalty is at. Monthly loyalty changes plus 3.37. Okay, we can probably take that hit to the loyalty. I'm worried because um, I've noticed that the state of Panixala, after we renegotiated their uh, vassal contract, they are now disloyalty. You can see their loyalty is minus 8 and it's changing by negative 1.52 every month. Um, this was because we renegotiated the terms of our agreement and I just think they're unhappy. I don't think that the agreement was especially more harsh than our original agreement, but I guess they, they're not happy being a science state. So I just wanted to check that. Um, so let's go ahead and let's do this. Now, I don't want to break the research agreement. I want to negotiate agreement. I want to set overlord conflicts to all. And oh, we didn't even give them unified sensors. We should do that as well. They'll be a little bit happier with us. And we can give them expansion permitted. Yeah, all of these things will make them happier with us. Um, okay, so we're gonna go ahead and renegotiate this contract. I could even try to like get some basic resources off them. That might be pushing it. Hmm. I think we're gonna need it. Um, especially with the minerals and the energy. Um, we might not turn them into a prospectorium right away. Let's see, if I actually want to turn them into a prospectorium, the negotiation is only going to cost us 70 influence. Let's see if we can actually just do it. Um, we need to give them 30% of, of their research. They're going to give us a whole bunch of good stuff. We can do this for only 106 influence. All right, I think we should do it. Hopefully we don't have negative loyalty from them, but if we do, then uh, we can renegotiate their contract to be a little more generous if we need. All right, let's proceed. Um, okay, and in the meantime, we are going to move our fleet, one of our fleets, we have three fleets, over, oh, let's see, this one's upgrading, this one's upgrading, all right, we should wait for the fleet to be fully upgraded and then we'll move it over here. Um, we also need to move our army over. We should start start moving the army because I think it's significantly slower than our um, fleet is. So we're gonna move our army into the XT81 singularity system. Um, and then finally, we just need to check our planets. Um, looks like we have plenty of um, open jobs and open housing on all of our planets. Again, we've taken a little bit of a hit to our population, so that's likely the reason why. Um, and I realized, now that we're done adopting tradition trees, I think there's only one more thing that we can do with our unity. Um, I haven't done this much yet because, uh, well, we've been spending our unity on tradition trees, but the only other thing that uses unity in this game that I'm aware of is, um, what do you call this? Planetary Ascension, I think? Anyways, it basically just improves the bonuses for the specialization of planets. So this generator world, 
um, right now has plus 25% uh, generator district build speed and plus 25% technician output. If I upgrade it to Ascension Tier 1, we can improve that to 32.81%. And that just costed us like, I think, 4,000 unity. So there's certain worlds that I want to target with this. Um, I want to target my energy world and my mining world first because those are the resources we're lowest in. And then I want to target um, my empire capital is probably a decent, decent one to do as well. Let's see, what are we actually getting from this? Yeah. Yeah, let's do this. Okay, so we're gonna... All right. Are we actually spending any of this unity? We have 40,000 unity. All right, um, and I think we're gonna do our tech worlds as well. This is reducing researcher upkeep. That's actually not that good. I thought it would increase maybe like uh, our researcher output, but researcher upkeep is like really boring. They just cost consumer goods and we already have a ton of consumer goods. Yeah, so maybe we actually focus more on, um, maybe we focus more on our mining and our generator worlds then. All right, so we've renegotiated our agreement with the United Center and Planet States. Um, and this means that if we go to declare war now, we have four claims that we're trying to press against them and their allies. Um, and our allies have six other claims. So in a total, we're going to be trying to take 10 systems, which I think is great. Hopefully we can get some more um, claims as well. All right. Are our fleets, one of at least one of our fleets fully upgraded? Wow, this fleet needs to be upgraded. How's this one doing? 88% upgraded, 90. All right, 99. Ships upgraded. All right, so we're going to move. Do we not have a commander? Oh, we could probably just move our commander from the recovered asset. We don't really need one there. I don't think we're gonna have that that thing see action anymore. It's just not strong enough. All right, so let's move into the XT-81 Singularity system with this fleet. Um, with this fleet, let's go ahead and move south into the Hajim system and prepare for war. And finally, our last fleet, once it's done upgrading, I think we're gonna move into the Moffith system. And yeah, we should be ready to go. Once our um, fleets make it to the, you know, the correct system that we want to be in to start the war, we're going to declare that war. No need to delay it any longer. This rebellion is nothing. It's no threat to us. All right. Oh, I think I accidentally moved both of the fleets. This fleet needs to stay behind. Actually, let's move this fleet into Regenoth because it still needs to upgrade. There we go. Okay. So this one can move into Regunoth. And um, we can give it the upgrade fleet order. There we go. Fantastic. How are our empire species doing? Okay, good. We've actually got it back down to Nubol and Valdar only. That's exactly what we wanted. We still have 40,000. Oh, that's not our unity. We have 91,000 unity. We might as well just keep ascending. This is going to cost 15,000. I think it's worth it. So we're going to take it from 32.81 to 40.62. I think we should upgrade our mining world as well. We're down to 58k. Alright, so we're improving our energy output and our minerals output. I think it might be also worth improving our um, special resource output, these exotic gases and crystal mines. So let's go ahead and 
do the planetary ascensions for this world as well. Increase our strategic resource output by 40.62% on this planet. Um, we can probably do it for our forge world as well. Oh, I don't think I can afford the, the unity. Yeah, it's going to cost me 26,000 and I only have 12,000, but we'll get there. We'll keep, we'll keep upgrading our planets as we go. Um, another suggestion that I got from you guys is going into policies and edicts and going into economic policy. Since we're making so much consumer goods that we don't need, we should actually turn this from mixed economy to militarized economy. This just um, decreases consumer goods for, uh, you know, equal percentage increase of alloys, which I think is going to be good for us right now. All right. This fleet is upgraded, so we can move this into the Moffat system. And um, we should be just about ready to declare war. All right. This fleet is ready to go. Let's go ahead and move into Fear Mathios, Xeris, and Chiselion. Our army can move into Zandabon. And this fleet still has 240 days. I think we'll turn up from normal speed to fast. I don't want to declare war until we're right on the border system. Actually, I think Swer will be fine because we're going to move into Red Hour first thing. We'll swing down here. Then I think we'll move here. Let me just remind ourselves what claims we have. Okay, so we're claiming all of these systems. And then hopefully we can get some claims as we go from uh, the Sandrin Authority as well. Research complete. All right, what have we finished researching? Hyperdrive level three. Okay, we will wait to upgrade our fleets with that because our fleets are all getting ready for attacking now. We don't really have time for upgrades. Colony development speed, absolutely useless at this point of the game. Gateway travel. To activate gateways. I bet you this is gonna let us build gateways. I do want to unlock x-ray lasers, but I, I want to be able to build gateways. I think that's pretty cool. Let's unlock this. 147 months. Next, we'll get the x-ray lasers. Um, we do need to keep, you know, an edge on our military, but gateways are kind of irresistible. If we can build a gateway, say, in, like, Sysmok and Walton, and we can just hop from one end of our empire to the other, that would be priceless. All right. I think it's time to declare war. So let's go ahead, declare war with the Conquer War Goal. And we are going to basically declare war with this entire block of the galaxy. This is risky. I don't actually know how powerful their combined um, their combined strength is, but I, I hope we can take them on. If not, we might suffer a humiliating defeat, but we'll try to white piece our way out if we can before it gets too late, if this is going to be a bad war for us. All right. We have declared war. We're doing it. Okay. So, let's go ahead and queue up some move orders. This needs to go into the Moffeth system. I actually think I would rather have my army on this front of the war. And I'll let the state of Panexala handle any... Um, planet invasions that they need to. I don't really want to have to deal with that. Alright. Fantastic. We are full up on consumer goods, so I might as well just buy a whole bunch of alloys. Alright. Hostile station. 90k against their 14k space station. They don't stand a chance. Are we researching citadels? Yes, we are. Okay, good. Hostile fleet engaged. Did we take any casualties? We did not. All right, let's continue moving. We're gonna move into these systems. Actually, I think we're gonna move here. Here, I want to knock out their star bases as quickly as possible because that's where they're going to be able to reinforce their fleets from. Okay, hopefully the Sandoran Authority is going to help us out too. 
Hostile station engaged. Just checking that they did join our war, yeah. They are in the United Valutarian League territory invasion. Fantastic. Incoming transmission. Incoming transmission? Migration treaty? No thank you. Alright, here we go. This fleet needs to continue on after this and uh, defeat their fleet in battle here. Relic activation. Oh right, do I need any more minor artifacts? No, we're full up. In fact, we need to discover an elegant insight. I keep forgetting to do this. Well, oh well. All right, we have claimed Moffith, so let's go ahead and move this fleet down into the Kilftar system. What are they taking against us? We have 92.6 and they're taking 13k and 6k against us. We should fight this battle. We'll beat them. No question about it. All right, council. Ah, we can get specialist pop resource output plus 5% and on uh, our home world, we can get plus 20% resources from jobs. Fantastic. Um, why don't we get display of power? That's probably not bad for the war exhaustion gain. Actually, we might be taking some claims in the middle of this war. So I think I'm going to take military build up. This is going to reduce any reinforcements that we need, but crucially, it's going to reduce our claim influence cost by 10%. Um, which is really good. That way we can make some additional claims during this war as we need. Complete. Okay, we're dealing 85% uh, of the damage coming out from our ships is actually reaching their ships, which is pretty good. They're dealing a much lower percentage, so we have a very effective fleet. All right, I don't think our reinforcements are going to make it in time. We're not, we're clearly going to win this battle, but we might take a few more casualties than intended just because our reinforcements won't make it in time. All right, speaking of, what's going on with this war? They have the Lyriton Compact. Okay. They're moving their fleet in, so we actually need to be aware of this. And we need to move this fleet to meet them in battle. Once we defeat them at Tirim. Who is this? Lord High Admiral has resigned. Who was, um, which fleet was he commanding? None of our fleets. Was he commanding our armies? He was. We're going to need a new army commander. Let's see what options we can get. Army damage plus 10%, but extra collateral damage as well. Hmm, I don't know if I like that. I mean, it's better than nothing. I just don't like the extra collateral damage, but hey, beggars can't be choosers. We need a new general, we'll take it. Um, neither of these are useful to us as an army general, so let's just keep taking this. Um, and we can probably take I suppose we could take defense engineer in case this guy ends up on the council. We're going to give him the general focus. Army damage plus 5%. Yes. All right. Um, speaking of our army, where is it? Have we moved it into the Moffith system? Looks like they have a plenty big transport fleet as well to help us out here. So um, I'm going to move this army down here and hopefully we can start invading some of these planets. All right, we won that battle. So let's move this fleet into the Baltrus system. And after that, we'll move it into the Olam system. This fleet needs to reinforce and it needs to repair. So let's go ahead and send it back to the Red Ore system to repair. Hostile station engaged. Okay, how's our fleet over here in the east doing? 
it's doing okay. We still have to meet them in T-Room. Looks like Panaxala has made it to T-Room in time, but they don't have nearly a big enough fleet to defend the system. What they did do for us though is they delayed they delayed the inevitable. Democratic ruler election. Okay, our commissary general is going to win the re-election. Nothing to do. We have an open council position. Of course, our Lord High Admiral needs to be reappointed. Let's go ahead and take this defense platform bonus with our new general. And there we go. Alright, is this fleet fully repaired? Is that, what, is that what it was telling me? Yes. Okay, we need to move into the ONAB system. This, we can move into Shifor and Olam. And we can move our army down. Looks like there's a planet in the ONAB system that we need to invade. Hostile station engaged. Hostile fleet detected. Evading hostile fleet. How are they doing loyalty wise? Okay, they still have positive loyalty with us. The state of myth fell. Still has positive loyalty with us, barely. State of Panaxala, have we fixed it? I sent some of my um, envoys to improve relationships with them, so hopefully when we get more positive relations, uh, we will increase their loyalty. I'd like to keep them loyal. Hostile station engaged. I don't know what other mechanisms we have to, you know, ensure loyalty from our subjects. I think there might be some uh, holdings that we could build to increase loyalty, but I don't know other than Hostile that. Hostile fleet engaged. Wow, they have quite a sizable force here. Definitely not trivial. I still think we're going to be able to take them on, but we're taking a lot of casualties here. In fact, uh, it's probably too late. I was going to say we really should have moved both of the fleets in um, to support, but oh well, too late. Like, I think we're going to take them on. A resolution has been failed. Good. We haven't really looked at the Galactic Council. Ch change the council size to four. Um, looks like we're going to be in the council next time the council opens up. I don't think we need a bigger council. I don't think we need minor military sanctions. Uh... We must place sensible restrictions on the navies of empires that are in breach of galactic law. Empires that have been denounced or are in breach of galactic law have penalties. Alright. I don't think we're in breach of galactic law, but we're going to continue opposing most of these laws. We don't really care about the galactic market. We'll just abstain on that. Repeal? Yes. We want to repeal anything. Equal Standing Act, non-interference and aggressive interference are banned. No, we believe in non-interference, so we're going to oppose this. All right, I think we are up to date on Galactic Market, uh, no, the Galactic Community. All right. Yes. Wow, that must have been the the bulk of their um, the bulk of their fleet. We just we just destroyed them. We need to reinforce this fleet and we need to send it for repairs again. We took a lot of casualties there. We lost half of our destroyers. We lost more than half of our cruisers. Luckily, we still have all our battleships. We lost 10, 10 corvettes. All right, how's this Starfleet doing? We should just repair them both. Make sure that they're both at full, full strength before we go. All right. We have secured the Tyrium system, and we could push into the Lyriton Compact if we want. Um, might as well just start occupying some systems, get that war score up. I think we'll try to hold at whatever choke point we can. So either I think this is this will probably be a fine choke point to hold. That or here, we'll just keep pushing in as far as we can. Um, all right, hostile fleets. Hostile station engaged. Let's see, they have 5,600. That's going to be nothing compared to our fleets. All right. Oh, I think we're low on alloys. We need to buy more alloys. 
Oh, I accidentally bought more food instead of selling food. That's exactly the opposite I wanted to do. Okay. Um, we could probably sell a bunch of consumer goods as well. Could probably sell a bunch of minerals as well. And we need to buy up as many alloys as we can. We need 49,000. Wow, okay. It's gonna be really difficult to keep our fleets reinforced. Okay. 97, 98, 99, and 100. Communications established with who? The alien civilization on Pudanius III has finished construction of its first interplanetary vessel of their homeworld. For better or worse, these aliens are now ready to join the galactic community and must be con counted among the galaxy's current spacefaring races. They appear to have successfully translated our language and opened diplomatic channels with us. Okay, where are they? Pudanus system. This is in the middle of Mythfell territory. Acknowledged. Well. Hello. I wonder how the state of Mythfell is going to handle that. Didn't they go fanatic xenophobe? I don't think they're going to... I don't think they're going to be very welcoming. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Our two fleets are fully reinforced. Let's continue pushing in to the ONAB system. We can move our army in as well. The end of the sovereignty of Pudanus. Wow, that was fast. Yep. They have just directly occupied that planet. Death of a great leader. Our scientists. Oh, wasn't this our... Um... This was our head of research. This was the uh, renowned scientist. Passed away at the age of 133. All right. Normally I would say keep it traditional, but this was, this was a very, very, this is from, yeah, this person has been in our empire governing for probably about a, a hundred years. So let the masses mourn. All right, a fitting send-off. We are going to have to choose a new head of research. And uh, let's see who our um, prospects are. Um, I say we take the edicts fund and edicts upkeep bonus. And we need to find out what district this person was governing. They were governing the Fortalia district. All right, let's go ahead and hire on a new scientist to govern the Fortalia district. All right, we can get, we want a scientist. Anomaly discovery chance, survey speed, survey speed, all of these are useless. We might as well just get leader experience gain. That being said, this person is 45 years old. Maybe we just take the youngest person just to get the most time out of them. Yeah, I say we actually just go for the youngest person. Um, let's go ahead and give a bonus to amenities. Fantastic. All right, you will be missed, Zosira. Construction complete. All right. Hostile station. Looks engaged. like we are meeting them in battle once more. This time, though. We have both fleets. They don't stand a chance with both fleets in the same system. Spaceport under attack. I almost want to kind of turn this on to slow mode. Go into the cinematic camera. Just watch this battle unfold. Spaceport lost. So all of these blue beams are our disruptors and the fast the fast moving blue beams are our auto cannons. Anything with a smoke trail is a missile or a torpedo. And of course we're using um, I think ultraviolet lasers are these purple lasers. And these kind of grayish lasers I think are our Kaotech our Kaotech lasers. Wow, look at this fleet that we're going up against. I don't think this is our fleet. It might be. Are these ours? 
No, these are hostile. This is truly a massive battle. I could use some su some support from the Sandrin Authority, but I I think their military is kind of pathetic compared to ours. Wow. All right. Um, how are we doing here? We need to continue occupying systems over here, and then maybe move down into the Blissa system. Yeah, let's continue pushing down on this front. Over here? Wow, I might even... No, I was going to say I'm going to pull in the MSI warship, but I honestly just don't think 18k is going to make that big of a difference in the long run, and I'd rather have it there in our home system in case the debt collectors come. All right, are we going to win this? I think we are. It's just, um, we're taking heavy casualties. Okay, we're destroying their federated fleets though. Um, they're after, I think after a few few of these victories, these are going to be the hardest, bit, uh, the hardest battles at the beginning of the war. Um, it's going to start getting easier the longer the war goes because their military and their resources are just going to be depleted. All right, yeah, here they go. They're starting to take massive hits. And finally, we are facing some fleets with battleships. We're finally seeing something that's not just a bunch of corvettes and destroyers. Refreshing. Every time I think we we're ready to press forward, I think we need to retreat and repair and uh, reinforce. All right, so just like last time, let's actually Repair and reinforce these fleets. Uh, which fleet is weaker? The Riven Star fleet is supposedly weaker. So this is the one we're going to reinforce first. Um, what can I do to get myself more alloys? I can continue just selling off as much of these, uh, you know, unnecessary resources as possible. Do we have any rare resources that we're just not using? Yeah, look at all these volatile moats we're sitting on. We don't need all these volatile grasses and volatile moats, rare crystals. Yeah, is this going to be enough? Oh, we need 53,000. All right, we can keep selling more. I hope we didn't need to like stockpile these for anything important because that was like years of years and years and years of these things stockpiled that we just sold. But we really need more alloys. I guess we could add in some monthly trades if we want, um, but for the time being, let's go ahead and reinforce this fleet as well. We can upgrade our um, our admirals. Let's see, we can give artillery weapons damage and ship's weapons range. The ship weapons range is pretty good. We get scout level 2, which increases our sublight speed, boring, but it is pretty good. Get at the front of the battle, especially with our like short range cruiser uh, corvettes. Um, I say we take artillery focus. Here, let's take ship's weapons damage plus seven percent. That's actually pretty good. This will improve small and medium slot weapon fire rate and fire damage. Gunship focus is actually sounds really good. All right, let's take those upgrades there. Um, again, our attention is very divided here, so I have to keep switching back and forth between the two fronts of the war, make sure that we're not getting like snuck up on here or anything. Okay, so we're moving into repair with both of these fleets at the Red Ore Starbase. And then finally, I think we need to move and take Onab. In fact, I'd like to take all of this and then kind of reinforce back in the ONAP system. Once we take all of this, we kind of have our flanks secured and we just have one front there and one front here to defend. All right, we're on slow. We could probably turn it back up to fast. I'm almost tempted for wars to keep it at normal instead of fast. That way um, we'll find ourselves making stupid decisions less often. Alright, how's this fleet doing 
90% armor, 97% hull, we're probably fine. We could reinforce with an extra Corvette, sure. What is happening with this rebellion? Why are they not taking Fear of Mathrios? What are their defense armies like? 233 and 466? Don't they have armies? Yeah, I don't know why State of Panic Saul is not moving their armies in to do this work, but oh well. We only have one army and I kind of want to keep it on this western front here. I don't want to deal with the rebellion. All right, our fleets are fully repaired and upgraded. There we go. Back into Onab we go. Yeah, look, this time they only have, what's that? It looks like 11.8K, but I see there's two fleets here. I just can't get a reading on the other fleet. Yeah, I can't get a reading on the other fleet, but it's 11.8K. It, anyways, it doesn't look like a terribly big fleet. Something we can definitely take. Ah, and it looks like the Sander in the United Planet States has a decently sized fleet to to reinforce us. Back us Hostile up. Hostile station engaged. Debt collectors. All right, bring it on. We won't Spaceport pay. Spaceport under attack. Okay, MSI is a joke. Spaceborne life form encountered. I was kind of excited. The whole premise of this playthrough is like payback. It's the payback origin. I wanted to get payback against MSI. It just we never got the chance to. Never really happened. It's kind of hard when we're playing on a huge galaxy size and. They're literally on the opposite side of the galaxy. Um, our Master Crafter, let's see, who are they? Governing Gruner Prime? Uh, that's a mining world. We don't really need this because I don't think we have that on our mining world. I don't think either of these really matter to us. We should probably just take refinery focused and oh well. Go with it. Maybe we will end up building some refineries. Alright, we have taken that fleet. Perfect. We're gonna move into Onab. Alright, deck collectors have been dealt with. Let's go ahead and give this fleet the repair order. Alright, this fleet is good to go. Let's actually move here. And then let's move back up here. I'd like to get a choke point that we can hold. And actually this vortex system seems like a good choke point. So if we can continue pushing up here. And then just hold at this vortex system. I think that'll be good for our northern front. Hostile fleet engaged. Alright. What do they have as term in terms of defenses here? 6.2k. 2.3k. Wow they really have. I think we've really really whittled down their defenses here. I think they had built up quite a quite a sizable um, navy to rival ours in terms of like the entire Federation's combined fleet power. Life but I don't think encounter. they have the economy to rival ours. Where are all these other fleets just like popping in from? Hostile Maybe they were engaged. cloaked or something. Uh, we need to move our army in. And uh, we need to invade this planet. What is their? Oh my gosh, their garrison is huge. Okay, let's start. Um, let's start bombarding so we can get ready for our army. I think I gave our armies the land army order. I don't think we're going to be ready to land armies just yet. So let's go ahead and enter orbit. And then one at a time, we're going to send our fleets to enter orbit of the space station to repair. One is going to be on bombarding duty, and the other is going to be on repair. Hostile fleet engaged. 915. Wow, that's just kind of sad. All right. Well, how is our fleet doing at repairing? Ah, uh, they've left orbit where they should be. Here they should be. Now they can repair. 91, 92, 93, 94, 95. Prospectorium specialist subject leveled up. Mythfell is a level two prospectorium. What does that mean for us? 
Let's check them out. I think we're losing loyalty with them. Uh-oh. It's going to be impossible to keep loyalty with all of our um, all of our different vassals here. What does level 2 Prospectorium provide for us? I don't think any of those things have changed. Negotiate agreement? Level 2. At tier 2 you get the following. Subject modifier. They get a bonus to their mining station build cost, their energy credits, their minerals, and their alloys, and their strategic resources. That's really good for them. But they have a minus 40% science modifier. Alright, so basically we in in increase their ability to produce things. Okay, unlocked prospectorium deposits. Resource discovery can now give one of the following resources. Alright, that's great. I think it's uh, getting time to wrap up the episode here as well. Alright, one of our fleets is fully upgraded, so we're going to move this fleet onto bombarding duty, and we're going to move our other fleet onto repair. Um, and how is our army doing? Are we ready to move into Onab? What is their garrison? It's around 800. And how is our army looking? 2k? Yeah, I think we can take it. I think we can take him on. We can afford to take a couple casualties with our army. We can always replenish our army. That's no big deal. Planetary invasion okay. begun. Once we win this planetary invasion, hostile fleet engaged. Once we win this planetary invasion, we will go ahead and end the episode. Okay. We did take quite a few casualties. Enemy planet secure. All right. Did we? I'm pretty sure we just had 20. I think, I don't think we actually took any casualties then. All right, um, let's end the episode here. We've had a great start to the war. Uh, we haven't managed to conquer that much territory from them, but that's because we have been busy um, fighting off their, their initial fleets. The initial power of their fleets was pretty, pretty massive. Um, but I think we've really put a dent into their fleets and, and their economy here. Um, so everything's going off to a great start. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching, and uh, stay tuned for the next episode. It's 2374. That puts us 25 years, just a little bit over 25 years until the endgame crisis. Um, this might, this very well might be our last war that we get the chance to do before we have to just start looking defensively for the endgame crisis. Um, yeah, uh, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.